I cannot believe that I had not only not seen the cat that looked at a king, but I had never heard of it. I shame myself as a Mary Poppins fan. Mary Poppins was always my favourite musical growing up. I absolutely adore it. Without a doubt, it is my favourite Disney film. And when I discovered the existence of this short, I was a little bit nervous because I wasn't sure how they would do it. But I think the decision they took with it worked very well. And of course, Julie Andrews had to be in it. If they had cast anybody else in this as a kind of Mary Poppins-esque character, wouldn't have worked well. Of course, not having Jane and Michael Banks in it is a bit upsetting, but that would be, well, in one case, unfortunately not actually possible. Um, and Karen Dottrice is no longer a 10-year-old little girl. But the concept is pretty much the same as when they went into Bert's paintings. But just before I talk about that magical moment, I just want to praise whoever put the music together for this. I'm afraid I don't have that person's name to hand or the name of the team who did that. But they use um, Feed the Birds and a couple of other songs from Mary Poppins, um, instrumental but slightly altered. So they're recognisable and just absolutely exquisite and it really carries the magic throughout and I truly loved it. This was actually released in 2004, directed by Dave Bossert and Peter Schneider and features, of course, Julie Andrews as Mary Poppins. And I really appreciate the fact they didn't try to dress her up as Mary Poppins. She's just dressed as herself. Um, although it would have been interesting to see her wearing Mary Poppins' costume at that point. But I think they took the right approach with that. We also have Dylan Cash and Olivia de Laurentiis as boy and girl. Uh, we also have Sarah Ferguson voicing the Queen, David Ogden Steers as King Cole, and Tracy Ullman as the cat. So we have a really great cast for this. And I'll be honest, the animation itself, the quality of the animation was good, the narrative I wasn't that bothered about, but the way it worked with the live action intertween, inter, I was going to say intertwe intertwined or woven at the same time, um, woven between, I thought, worked beautifully. So Julie Andrews, in her Mary Poppins-esque, mannerisms steps into this painting with these two children they follow this beautiful white cat that goes in and when they're inside of this chalk drawing they watch the tale of the arrogant king cole and how this cat character this beautifully animated cat character makes him realize that he is not the most intelligent just because he is king the story itself of course is a really nice message don't be above yourself don't think you're better than everybody else even if you're king doesn't mean you're more intelligent, more cunning, more clever, more creative, whatever. But I just didn't find it that entertaining. Um, when you compare it to the kind of animation you got in Mary Poppins itself, it definitely wasn't as engaging. Of course, this didn't have the same production value or the same time spent on it. Probably based on inflation, they probably did spend more um, doing this. I don't know. I can't imagine. I don't know how much Mary Poppins costs, but I imagine it costs quite a lot. The animation for that definitely would have taken a lot longer than it took to do this animation. But at, at the same time, it's not meant to be a big feature length film that's all, all singing and all dancing. But the animation just wasn't quite what I would have wanted from something that was Mary Poppins even adjacent. But on its own, in isolation, it's nice. The live action is edited into it very effectively. I think it works very well. The characters are quite likeable. Boy and girl are pretty generic everyday children. Um, seeing Julie Andrews in a Mary Poppins settings because they're at the gates of the park. I'm not sure if it's the exact same gates off the top of my head. I don't even know if they filmed that outside of a real park or in a studio. I imagine it would have been a studio, but I could be wrong. But a very similar style of Victorian gate architecture, the chalks on the painting. You do feel like you are watching Mary Poppins and listening to Julie Andrews. She doesn't sound tremendously different over the years. The children, I do wish, were wearing more Edwardian clothing, but that's not really a fault. It is a contemporaneous piece, or a lot more contemporaneous than Mary Poppins was. I think they made a lot of right decisions with this. It's got a lot of magic of Mary Poppins in it, without trying to say, I am being an extension of Mary Poppins many decades after the fact. It's magical, it's great fun. The message in the animation is really nice, even if the animation is not quite what I would have wanted. As I said, I can't believe I hadn't seen it or even heard of it because I love Mary Poppins and I'm slightly getting slightly emotional just thinking about Mary Poppins because 
if you haven't watched um prop culture on disney plus the episode about mary poppins is just so beautiful and it means so much to so many people and i think if you're a mary poppins fan i'm not crying we're fine everything's cool mary, it's so amazing you know how much uh, you, when there's that one film in your childhood that just touched you so much and you've carried it with you over the years and something that your favorite film company worked so hard on and created something so magical regardless of pl travers's opinions on it it's just exquisite and this is a small extension of that um if you're a fan of mary poppins definitely check it out i think you'll find it a, a really magical experience